again everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel Fillers and Filters. Now this is the second episode of our purposive communication series. Now I have been getting messages of um, oral communication students in senior high school who would like to ask me or to request me to make videos of uh, oral communication. Now for people who are taking up uh, purposive communication, now these concepts that I'm, I will be discussing might already be familiar to you, but uh, I will discuss them nonetheless so that those who are taking up oral com can also benefit from these videos. I have decided to keep my videos shorter and keep it in a one topic, one video format so that it would be easier for students to find the topic or the specific topic that they are actually looking for. It would be easier for you, that is. The previous discussion that we've had, we have already discussed the purpose of communication, the importance of purpose of communication when you become professionals, when you become part of the labor force in the future. Now, being a good communicator in general would make you a more efficient and more productive part of the workforce. Now, when I say being a good communicator, it does not only mean being able to express yourself properly or fluently or efficiently, but being a good communicator entails that you're also a good listener that you also know how to listen and absorb other people's ideas evaluate other people's opinions and uh, you know weigh whether or not you will concede to their opinions or you will push with what you believe in so being a good communicator again entails that you should be able to express yourself but also you should be able to know when to shut your mouth and listen to what other people have to say now again in the previous video we have discussed the, the basics of uh, communication so we have discussed the different elements of communication including the participants or the people involved the message the feedback the channel the context and the noise so in this particular episode we'll be talking about the different stages involved in the communication process so in some references again depending on your reference the different stages may actually vary so some references would say there are four stages and some would say that there are five <music> Now let us try to define these steps in more detail. So first we have the process or the stage of encoding. So that when we say encoding, that means the sender tries to choose the words that he or she is going to use, choose the structure, choose the language that she is going to use. So that when we say encoding, that means the sender will have to construct or formulate his or her message and then we have the stage of sending the message so that when we say sending the message that is the conveyance or the transmission of the information from the sender to the receiver now of course prior to sending the sender will have to choose what sort of channel or medium is he or she going to use. So that's the third process, which is selecting the channel. So that the sender constructs the message and then he or she will choose what channel is she going to use in conveying the message or in transmitting the message and then she will send it so afterwards, of course, the receiver will receive the message. And once the receiver has received the message, it doesn't stop there. Okay? Because the receiver will also have to decode 
the message. So that when we say decoding the message, he or she will have to, of course, use necessary skills to be able to understand what the message is. Now, what you would note in these stages involved in the communication process is that along the way, there could be breakdown in communication. The sender has chosen to use social media as the channel in communication. So he was able to compose the message, that's encoding, to send the message via, so he's, uh, he or she selected social media as the means of uh, conveying his message. Now once it stops there, so for instance, the other person is not online, or the other person has blocked the sender, there is breakdown in communication, okay? But also, there could be instances where the sender encodes the message, he was able to send the message by selecting a channel, and then the person has received the message but failed to decode it. That means failed to understand what the message is. There can also be a breakdown in communication. So let's say, for instance, I'm talking to you now or I'm, I'm speaking to you now, for instance, in English and you happen to be not knowledgeable in English or you don't have uh, the necessary competence in English to be able to understand my message, then there could be breakdown in communication. <music> communication to be effective and successful all these stages five or four stages have to be met each of these stages in the communication process has to be well thought out the sender should actually make an effort to make his or her message understandable now here are some questions that communicators should ask themselves to ensure that they'll be able to have effective communication or to ensure that they avoid breakdown in communication. So for the sender, is your message clear and simple? So did you actually consider your audience in composing your message? And when I say considering your audience, that means did you consider the language that they are most comfortable in or did you take into consideration the level of language or the, their level of linguistic skills. Now, in terms of channel, is the channel that you use the most appropriate and most effective one? Do you think that your message will be sent clearly using such a channel? And lastly, for the receiver, it would also be important to ask yourself if you really made an effort to understand the message. Were you focused or were you distracted? while you were reading, watching, or listening to the message, did you actually keep an open mind while trying to decode the message? Because sometimes open-mindedness can do the trick. When you're close-minded, what happens is that it would be harder for you to absorb the message and you really wouldn't make an effort to try and understand the message, that is. Perhaps one of the biggest issues encountered by policymakers in education regarding pursuing or pushing with the academic year would be how the lesson delivery will be done. So, cost-oriented groups pointed out that not all Filipinos have access to internet connectivity. Not all Filipinos have gadgets, smartphones, or laptops, or tablets, and the like. Considering all these, they have decided to use the modular approach in delivering information or lessons and topics to their students or to the students, that is. Now, whether or not lesson delivery using the modular approach would be effective, well, we have yet to find out. But of course, a lot of students would still recognize the need for face-to-face or at least a lecture type of uh, lesson delivery. So, of course, that's the reason why I'm trying to help out in a way that I can by 
you know, coming up with videos like this. I'll be cutting the discussion here, but of course, I will also be coming up with another video, you know, with the same getup. So again, thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll be sharing these videos so that people, students who might need a little help with their lessons in oral communication in, or in purposive communication may also benefit from these uh, efforts. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. Au revoir.